Okay, so um, let me start by saying that uh, I want to thank all of the emergency services uh, around the country and the civil defence uh, departments who have responded uh, so rapidly to the earthquakes. Um, as you're aware, a national emergency hasn't been called. It's only called under the legislation if locally it's deemed that they are not uh, able to carry out their functions and responsibilities. That hasn't been the case. So all 16 of the uh, uh, regions around the country have activated uh, their civil defence uh, requirements and been monitoring their own local situation. Uh, in terms of um, firstly dealing with the, the, the quake itself, the best advice we have is probably what you know, there was a 7.5 metre, um, 7.5 on the Richter scale, 15 metres deep, but it also went we think about 100 kilometres out to sea. And that's the issue that caused the potential tsunami, uh, was that it wasn't on land solely, it went out to sea. Uh, we know that waves uh, were as high as two metres. Um, we also know that New Zealanders responded absolutely as they should be in this instance. They didn't go down to the beach, they didn't go and ignore the warnings, uh, they took the advice seriously. Um, we now know that uh, those around the country, uh, that tsunami risk has been uh, downgraded. Uh, to coastal warnings, but we also urge people just to continue to be cautious. In terms of um, the areas that are most affected, um, that's clearly on the east coast uh, around that sort of Kaikoura area and inland around Colbert and the likes. Um, we've had very limited communications there because that's been cut off, so we've been working through police comms uh, during the night. We obviously want to thank everyone for the response that's been going on. Uh, sadly, on the best information we have, there have been two fatalities. At this point, we're unable to give you precise information of what caused those fatalities, but as soon as we have better information, obviously, we'll come back to you. I uh, want to thank uh, everyone who's supported uh, New Zealanders along the way. There's been a huge number of people here, for instance, in Wellington that have been evacuated from uh, hotels and the likes, and we've been putting those into the response centres. For instance, here in the Beehive, where we've been confident about the facilities. It's important that people to continue to follow the, the messages that uh, will be broadcast during the day. In terms of getting a better assessment of what happens next, we have uh, military helicopters uh, that are available to us. Uh, the NH90 is uh, going to be going down to uh, Kaikoura very uh, rapidly. Um, the area is cut off from, from, from a road perspective, uh, so there's somewhat a, a limit of what we can do in the first instance, but we obviously want to put one of those helicopters down there. There's another one that will be uh, in Wellington. St John's have been flying people in. As soon as we can get a much better assessment of the actual damage, then we can work out the next steps from here. But one of the purposes of putting the helicopter down there, other than just trying to provide reassurance to the people of Kaikoura, is also to make sure that we can provide them better comms, which has been one of our bigger issues here. I'd say overall the systems uh, worked well, uh, but because of the isolated nature of some of the damage, it hasn't always been perfect information, but it's been the best information we've had available to us. Um, so on that note, I'll pass over to the Minister, and then uh, we can probably take any comments that you have at this point. Uh, well, look, I think that's a very comprehensive uh, briefing from the Prime Minister. There's uh, not a lot that I would uh, be able to add, uh, other than to say that the assessment throughout the day of uh, what's required to get communities back into uh, good shape uh, will continue and also of course uh, we want to know uh, if there are any uh, urgent medical requirements uh, in those areas that are currently a little bit cut off. Uh, with that I think I'll just uh, leave those comments um, and I'm sure between us we can answer any questions you might have. Will you be visiting the region, either of you today? Th yes. Well, sorry, so the plan, the plan at this point is that um, ODESC officials will be meeting at 9 o'clock this morning. They'll be able to give us the, you know, the best information we have at that point. Cabinet um, will continue to meet today as expected. And then at that point, um, my expectation is that the Minister and I will go down to uh, Kaikoura and any other parts that we think it makes sense for us to visit. Always with these situations, it's a sort of it's a balancing act between making sure that um, you're providing people um, support and assurance, which we want to make sure New Zealanders understand they will have the full support of the government. Uh, but on the other side of the coin, making sure that um, we don't impede any uh, efforts that are being undertaken on the ground to get people back on their feet. But there'll be a lot of assessment, I think, that happens during the course of the day about the significance of what damage has been undertaken and the reliability of buildings different structures going forward. So there are medical staff that are being taken in there 
uh, those areas at the moment uh, uh, through St John's, but the pressing need is to get communications gear into those areas and that will be the first uh, task for the helicopters this morning. How vulnerable do you think Kaikoura is given its location, State Highway 1 is on a, a lot of yep. vulnerable piece of coastline there, how easy do you think it will be to access? Well many parts of New Zealand are vulnerable and that's a coastline that's had a lot of work done on it over the, the years. Uh, what we'll need to do is assess just what has happened, uh, where there are slips etc and, uh, and get them repaired. Will you still be going to APEC? Uh, look, at the planning at this stage was to, tomorrow to go to Argentina uh, and that was uh, um, a visit you know, prior to the APEC meeting. I think the, the best information I can give you at the moment, given I haven't had a lot of chance to talk about those issues obviously to my people, is that uh, we'll just take a, a call on that at some point. Um, there's got to be a pretty reasonable chance that we don't undertake the Argentine, Argentinian League. Um, yeah, but we'll assess that case by case, but I wouldn't want to make that call this time in the morning. Do you think there's more fatalities beyond the two that you know about so far? On the very best information we have at the moment, we think it's only likely to be two, but of course you know, there are isolated parts of what's uh, of the country which we don't have you know, perfect eyes on, so we can't be 100% sure, but we're not aware of any that we're not reporting to you. The best information we have is two. Prime and Minister, and could, that, could that number rise? Well, as I said, I, we don't have any, any indications at this point to believe that it will rise, but we obviously can't rule that out because what's going to happen now as we have daylight is we can go into a proper assessment. Communities will obviously go out and, and uh, reach out to their neighbours and their friends and their workmates to get a sense of uh, damage and just making sure that people are getting support. I mean, one of the big issues here is that earthquakes uh, are terrible things for um, destabilising people's sense of confidence. And it's great that um, those uh, facilities have been established for, and, and for places for people to go, response centres and the likes. It's not just the physical need to provide them uh, either another place to go, it's also the emotional support. And uh, certainly here in Wellington, uh, anyone that, uh, that uh, was around for the, for the earthquake, I can't obviously speak in the South Island, but it was um, the most significant shock I can ever remember in Wellington and uh, you know, people will, will be feeling quite vulnerable as a result of that. What and, was and the reaction? The Wellington Did City you Council? jump up or get under the way or anything? Well, it went on for so long. I, um, uh, we eventually did start moving to a point in, I was, I was in Premier House when Brian was here, so it's a little unusual, I was here on a Sunday night because when I come down on, on Monday morning, but because John Kerry was here, I'd stayed overnight in Wellington. So it was a very significant shock. I mean, it started, um, as I'm sure most people will recall in Wellington, you know, a little bit, bit more slowly. I mean, it's not unusual to get quakes here, but then it started building in its intensity and people appreciate Premier Houses uh, been built a long time ago, so it's a, a structure that really rattles around. We started, uh, we had some glasses that were broken and uh, some stuff in the, in the room that started moving around quite a lot. Um, and at that point, obviously, you know, everything else kicked in from there. But um, I, I just know from, from going through the Christchurch earthquakes just how much it undermines people's confidence. So the most important thing we can do at the moment is just give them reassurance that the support will be there for them. Uh, and people should take a great deal of confidence that for the most part buildings in New Zealand are built uh, to, to a good code and they perform well. We certainly saw that in the Christchurch earthquakes. But the Wellington City Council is saying that there's structural damage to some of these tall buildings in Wellington. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? And, and it sounds quite alarming. Well, I think until they make that assessment uh, properly this morning, I think anything that was done in the dark is going to be uh, a literally a stab in the dark. So they're taking the precaution of uh, getting structural engineers over all those buildings. That's a normal uh, sort of precaution uh, once you go over about five and a half or so on the Richter scale. So uh, no one should speculate just yet what that uh, outcome of those inspections will be. And are you hearing reports of many buildings down, either homes or...? No. Um, financially, how well placed is the government to respond to any significant cost this earthquake may bring? Oh, look, we're in great shape. I mean, obviously, EQC you know had significant drawings on on its uh, funds because of the um, Christchurch earthquakes. But I, mean, I think everybody knows that um, the books are in are in good shape. 
Uh, that's one of the reasons as a government why you work hard to get the books back in good shape is to make sure you can always deal with the unknown. So I'm not I'm not at all concerned about our capacity to meet any costs. There will there will be um, I would imagine quite major costs around roading and infrastructure that will be damaged. You know, bound to be pipes and things. We know that from Christchurch. That when you get a movement in the earth of this sort of magnitude, then it um, then it damages core infrastructure more than as ini you're initially aware of, and it's more expensive to rebuild. But you know we're quite within our, um, our um, uh, financial capacity to deal with all that. In terms of the two fatalities, can you just tell us a little bit more, male, female, and where, where these people died? Um, look, we know, but we, we don't feel confident enough absolutely to say at this point, and because you know, I don't want to have to go and correct that, I think it, all the best I can give you is just that information. And, and directly caused by the earth process, right? Well, again, some some uncertainty um, to be absolutely sure uh, and so again when I have better information I'll give you that. We know about this heart attack uh, that's been reported, you know if that's related to the earthquake at all? Again I, I don't know but um, there's bound to be you know, potentially that situation. Thank you, thanks very much. Thank you.